So what do you make of this earnings season? What's, what, what stood out to you the most? Yeah, I would say in general, uh, most of the second quarter uh, earnings print has been strong because mm. uh, uh, first quarter has been a low season. Second quarter, quarter on quarter perspective, the volume being up for most of the uh, EV players. Although during the earnings season, another key focus other than uh, the result would be the outlook into the second half. So especially uh, July, August uh, 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 is a typical low season and it didn't really uh, perform. Although um, mixed perspective for the first 25 days of August, mm. the EV penetration breaking 55 percent mm. but we are now heading into uh the high season so last year high season wasn't very high so uh <laughs> the market was expecting uh with a strong model pipeline um, um to play out in the coming two months uh mm. we noticed expo has been launching a new model uh this week and uh, uh in the next month uh neo's envelope model uh, to be coming soon and byd have a strong pipeline based on the second quarter what they just announced the fifth generation of plug-in hybrid platform yeah so uh uh, based on that platform, they probably re refresh most of their portfolio by the end of the year. So we do expect a, a strong uh, model supply. And uh, I would want to uh, highlight another thing. By the end of July, the government has been doubled down the trading policy. And in August, uh, there's a couple of local government also following um, this subsidy and giving more uh, support locally. So we had a bit of wait and see. Uh, maybe we can get a better deal. So with a bit of pent-up demand to be um, uh, released in the coming two months, we do expect uh, we have a, a good, good, good confidence and conviction that month on month perspective, we might see uh, improvement into uh, September high season. Right. Okay. Mm. So you mentioned about new model lineups. You mentioned about the trade-in programs. Um, when it comes to margins then, I mean, I think BYD was able to do 20% margins. Uh, Lee Auto, Tesla also maintained double digits. Is that sustainable then, given that you think the pricing dynamics are going to be improving into the fourth quarter? Yeah. Great question. That's the uh, that's the, another key focus. I would say, although it's uh, it's deviate uh, player by player, but I would generally uh, classify. There's a couple of things we should be looking at that has been the key driver for the margin for these various OEMs. Um, the the overseas mix. Overseas currently generates uh, generate a higher margin because of the more favorable competition and pricing environment. Yep. So the, if the overseas mix uh, increasing, that's a strong margin support. And, and second is the product mix. If you are launching more high-end product, uh, if you are refreshing with the new technology such as BYD, the, the, the fifth generation product definitely have more pricing power than the previously uh, last generation product. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say product mix um, uh, is a key factor. Uh, taking Geely, for example, if Zikr continue to sell more, that it will bring up the product and average selling price mix, and that's a strong margin support. And then that's the um, that's the economic of scale. If you can uh, increase the volume, uh, then economic of scale should be another key support to the margin. Of course, uh, the negative factors we keep watching is the channel discount. So if uh, the company um, is uh, introducing more discount in order to push up the sales or meet the ta target or destocking, that's another factor to watch. But then that uh, we will evaluate these angles uh, for various players. The, I think we, we spoke with BYD earlier in the week. Uh, to your point that overseas, that's where the margins are. Um, and I think Stella Lee mentioned that uh, at some point, they do see sales, uh, overseas sales, to make up half, if not more than half, of their total revenues. When do you see that happening for BYD? When, in other words, when does BYD become a proper global automaker? Yeah, that's uh, that's a billion dollar question. <laughs> I would say, yeah, we, we, we do spend a lot of time um, um, talking and researching about the EV going global and BYB, yeah. uh, BYD being a key player. Uh, so we, uh, we, we've we been mo more focusing on the China brand who is in um, um, Chinese management uh, operation mm. and their global footprint. So as far as we can see, the global um, um, going global story is really breaking down into two parts, uh, the mm. localization and the, the export. Okay. So the company so who has been championing the localization, which will help them better mitigate the potential tariff and the trade environment risk, um, would be the one who is most favorable, and that's BYD. So BYD just completed... Uh, their uh, Thailand plant um, yeah. by the end of the first half, and uh, their Brazil plant will be coming online next year, Indonesia plant the year after. They are also uh, kicking off two plants in Hungary and Turkey in Europe. Mm. So uh, they are in one of the best uh, shape to tackle the global opportunity. Although we are conscious of the complicated and challenging trade environment, we would say uh, the key focus would be the emerging market, namely ASEAN, South America, and the Middle East. Okay. Uh, domestically, though, when do you think 
think this price war, are you seeing signs of it easing already? Yeah, that's not that, that's another billion dollar question. <laughs> I would say we're currently in process of the China EV consolidation. We see that happening. The top ten market uh, top ten uh, market players um, market share has been concentrated to eighty um, percent uh, from seventy percent in the past two years. Wow! So yeah. we are in the middle of that, um, and the the, the 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 sector EV leaders um, used to comment twenty four, twenty five, twenty six could be three years of consolidation. We are probably right in the middle of that. So. So I would argue, in the process of consolidation, it's a temporary value destroy for the sector until we reach the inflection point. So before that, I would say price, pricing pressure is part of life now, but pricing war is on and off. We had it on um, for the first quarter. Uh, after BYD had the, the glory version, uh, which is a budget version introduced, that, that has been pressure on most of the market um, player, which they're price taker. But in the second quarter, we see um, that that tactic has been working, and they're introducing the new technology, increasing the pricing power, so the market leader don't have to do that. So there's also more new supply pumping into the market, so second, second quarter, we've been quite a confidence. Um, uh, temporarily, that's going to be an off chapter. So third quarter, we see the pricing um, pressure uh, getting higher, but now it's, uh, it's tapering off a little bit. Okay. As we talked earlier, there's a new model supply. When you launch a new model, you tend to to be more disciplined in the channel discount. And we're talking about the demand dynamic should be picking up with, with more government support um, and uh, the pent-up demand to be released. Usually when the demand dynamic trending well, the pricing pressure tend to ease temporarily. So I think the pressure is constant until we reach the inflection. But in the near term, we're, we indeed are selling into a better pricing dynamic chapter for the next month. Mm.